Hello makers and welcome back to another studio vlog. If you are new here, welcome. I'm Joanna and this is Stitching the High Notes where each week I share what I am currently making, whether it be knitting, sewing, cross stitching, crochet, whatever crafty rabbit hole I may be going down, as well as a look behind the scenes of my creative small business where I make project bags for makers like you. And my hope is to always, each week, encourage you to nourish your own creativity and to stitch joy into your everyday life, otherwise known as the high notes. <laughs> How are you doing? I hope that you are well, that you've had a good week, or that you're looking forward to a better week ahead. I am doing well. I've had another very full week, and as has been the new rhythm, I feel like about every three months in the last two almost three years I feel like the rhythm of life has shifted gears <laughs> but aside from the usual like seasons and kind of things but yeah I've been in a really good rhythm lately in terms of my making and sitting down with you all it is once again again Saturday and uh, Saturdays have become my real chance to um, just kind of slow down and be creative I'm able to be creative a little bit here and there throughout the week, but it's very work focused as as it tends to be. And Saturdays are just a real breath of fresh air as of late, and I really look forward to them. Um, and it's paired now with a really busy, exciting time uh, for the shop. It's full seasonal bag time. So today, before I just already, I'm. It's going to be a chatty one, a nice chatty one. So grab your stitching, your knitting, and a cozy or refreshing beverage, and let's get into it and chat away. So I have some knitting today to share with you, uh, some more thoughts on my tank top. Um, I have some bags to show you that are coming to the shop on October 1st, some news about the annual pumpkin mal, and a little bit more here and there. Um, it is now autumn officially. Uh, we had it on the 22nd, so a few days ago, and I don't know about you all, but let me know if you feel the same way, but this year especially, I really struggled in that liminal in-between space between um, late summer and the autumn official equinox turnover. And when it happened on the 22nd, I felt so, I felt like this sense of relief. And it's very interesting because here in the Bay Area, we get our warmest days for the summer in October and late September. But we also, it's paired with that some really crisp and cool foggy mornings and evenings and then of course the sun and all that stuff so I felt like okay we've been like gearing up for this shift and now it's finally here and I'm like I'm here for it plus autumn it's my favorite it's I think the majority of knitters favorite season it is sweater weather <laughs> it's Halloween and pumpkins and just a cozy season has officially begun and I am here for it so uh, I've been in between work and in the evening and stuff really I'm gonna segue here into knitting been knitting a bunch on my socks so I cast this on last week and this is a toe up vanilla sock, just stockinette. Um, I don't use a particular pattern per se, um, but maybe someday I will write down kind of my recipe for my socks. Let me know if you'd be interested in that. Um, but as you can see, there's no heel yet because I'm trying a new to me technique, uh, which is an afterthought heel. And I'm doing, I'm trying out, there's many different ways to do afterthought heels. Um, you can do a waist yarn like I've done here. You can do it with or without a lifeline, which I've done here with embroidery floss, the blue. Um, so what I've done is I got to the point of my heel. So for me, that's when it measures seven inches from the tip of the toe to here for the foot. And then <clears throat> I put in a lifeline and then I uh, did a row with waist yarn. And then I knit uh, starting to use the same colorway. 
And I just started uh, the cuff, which I'm doing a two by two uh, rib. So knit two and purl two. And this gorgeous yarn is so autumnal. Uh, last week, if you saw, I picked it out from my stash. Uh, it was a lovely gift. Uh, and it's from a yarn dyer that I've been wanting to try for some time called Beehive Yarns uh, from the UK. And this is in the Hoggle and Foxtails uh, colorways and the Audrey Sock Base 75% Superwash Merino and 25% Nylon, kind of your, your standard sock base, if you will. And here it is all skeined up because you gotta show skeined up yarn, it's just too pretty. It's called a cake for a reason because it's decadent and yummy. <laughs> so, so pretty. And here is the gorgeous um, contrasting mini skein yarn. I oh, love it. I probably in hindsight could have done the toes as well in the contrasting yarn, but I haven't really, I don't think I've ever done a full set of contrasting heel, toe, and cuff before. I'll have to look through my Ravelry pages to see. Um, just because it's, I don't really have a need for it. I don't wear my socks often enough for the necessity to do it because usually you do that so that if it wears out in your toe or your heel that you can easily replace that yarn in some way. Plus it's just aesthetically like pretty awesome to have a contrasting colorway. But I've been really into it and so I'm excited to go. I really like the trend too of using um, like your leftover, which I have like a ton back there, <laughs> uh, your leftover speckled yarn uh, for the toe, heel, and cuff, and then use like a just regular, like, um, um, what's the, I keep saying tonic, like I'm in musician terms, <laughs> but use just like a tonal colorway. Uh, so yeah, so I, I'm really, I'm really loving the colorways. I, I'm looking forward to the afterthought. So what I'm gonna do is, I will of course share the whole journey with you and what I learn. I'm gonna try doing a shadow wrap heel, afterthought heel. I still have to kind of wrap my brain around it, but honestly, I'm probably not gonna do it until I do even the second sock um, so that I can do them both together because I'm loving just having just blissful stockinette on the needles right now. It's just what I'm able to kind of knit um, given my schedule with work and with the shop and everything. So I'm just gonna keep plugging away and making all the socks <laughs> and and kind of, I, I'm just really excited to do it. So yeah, and I wanna, I wanna do a little bit of cross stitching as well. Um, some like really easy cross stitching. I got a, uh, cross stitch kit that starts October 5th uh, by the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. I treated myself for my birthday a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, and got the Maple Lane um, kind of club that goes monthly through, I think, until February. So it's something that'll be nice and stretched out and, you know, just something I can plug away at. But yeah, that's my main kind of knitting. I did quite a bit this week, which is pretty awesome. I mentioned earlier that I had some more thoughts about my tank top, my Keen Wonder tank top. Uh, thank you all so much for your kind words of support and rooting me on. I shared last week that I just have fallen out of the knitting of the project um, and I'm gonna keep plugging away at it. I didn't touch it at all this week. It was like the last thing I wanted wanted to tackle but I just need to seam it up and then pick up stitches and do it's it's something that I probably probably on a Saturday someday I can like you know sit down and get it all done um in the course of a Saturday and that sounds really lovely like after I get through October um but it's it's just an interesting situation where I actually want the finished garment I'm really looking forward to wearing it I think it while I don't think it might be a staple in my wardrobe, I think it will be something that I can wear off and on. And a lot of you were very encouraging and pointed out that I could wear them with these little cardigans that I wear. I have one that was in black that I was wearing last week, and that's a very good point. Um, so 
I'm looking forward to it. And and the time has passed to wear it this season, unfortunately. But yeah, I'm gonna keep keep doing it. Um, so I've folded it up all nice and neat, and um, I have it in my whip basket over here. And so. Uh, probably after I get through October and all of the shop stuff, uh, getting the holiday box pre-orders out at the beginning of November, I'll probably tackle that as well as cast on a new sweater at that time too. But in the meantime, it's going to be sock, lots of sock knitting, lots of still more of the little fall charms that are easy to kind of whip out in a couple of hours on a Saturday or on a Sunday morning kind of like a self-care kind of little tiny things is what I'm kind of doing right now for for it and it's fun I can go through I picked out all that other yarn last week that is also a segue into pumpkin mail also kind of pumpkin autumnal theme so there's so many more socks that I can make and just have all lined up ready for afterthought heels I'm so excited it's just it's very freeing and opening and, and exciting not that heels are a hindrance for me I just the idea of just blissful continuous stockinette knitting with lots of separate little finished products sounds so exciting versus like a stockinette cowl which I've made in the past so yeah I'm really excited but um yeah, so that's kind of what I have been making, uh, but segue into Pumpkin Mal. Uh, I talked with Gabby, and we are going to do the Pumpkin Mal this year. It was kind of like we were trying to figure out if we can really commit to it, because we both have a lot going on behind the scenes, you know, stuff. And so we wanted to make sure that we really had the capacity to do it. And we want to keep the tradition alive. This will be the sixth year that we've done it together. And I know a lot of you all are really excited and want to continue the tradition. So thank you for the nudge. <laughs> um, so we're going to do it October 1st. It'll start October 1st and it'll go through the end of October. So it'll be just the month of October, which is really the height of the pumpkin mall each year anyway. So we're really excited. Um, it's gonna be just over on Instagram. I think for myself, just in case you're not on social media, I'm less more and more these days, I'm gonna open up a Ravelry thread just so you can share your projects there if you're not on social media and so you can chat together. Um, but for the most part, just share what you are making and get ideas of what other people are making using the hashtag pumpkin mail 2021 uh, if you want ideas from previous years use the same hashtag with the previous year i think it goes back all the way to 2016 maybe and it might even just have been pumpkin mail that year the most i think we had was last year's pumpkin mail 2020 i think there are quite a few posts there so lots of ideas the idea is just it's loosey-goosey even more so this year it's just to make anything that is pumpkin inspired autumnal it could be color it could be and pumpkins come in many colors um it can be any type of craft so it can be knitting weaving crochet cross stitching embroidery sewing you name it just go for it and be inspired and inspire us um we're not going to be doing prizes because of our capacity right now um but if anybody does want to donate it'll be digital only because that's just what we can manage um, and that's been the majority of the prizes in the years past uh, too so um, some really good patterns out there and um yeah so let us let me know down below if you're excited to take part again this year i as you saw last week, my mind was already there. So I've got yarn that is pumpkin themed, all lined up and ready to go. Um, yeah, I would love to know what you are gonna make this year. I have to get a sip of water because I am talkative. I've had too much caffeine in the last few days. I don't know, maybe it's a mix of like creative energy influx from be feeling like a little bit of relief, but also just, I gotta, I gotta calm it down. 
The next shop update is going to be on October 1st, so this coming Friday. Uh, it'll be at 10 a.m. Pacific, and oh, my voice just got really excited. <laughs> All the bags are autumnal themed. I just uh, put a post over on Instagram earlier this morning uh, because I've been playing catch up all day today. I didn't get anything done except working on that little sock. Um, uh, shop wise, I got nothing done this week, um, but I made a lot of headway today and I have some bags to show you, some examples of what's going to be in the shop as well as some of the new stitch markers. They're all autumn and Halloween themed. I'm really excited about these new fabrics. It feels so good to be using some new fabrics again. Um, and they're all three new to me, so it's really, really exciting. So without further ado, let me show you. I have them. I have three collections. I'm going to show you all five bag types in one of the three collections or fabrics. So first up we have needlework pouches. This is for a cross stitch or embroidery project, really any crafty project that you want to put in here. Um, it fits an eight by eight Q snap. There are two pockets or pocketses. I just started listening to the Hobbit y'all. Andy Circus is narrating it. It is amazing. Thank you, Denise, for, thank you slash I blame you for, <laughs> for letting me know about that. Back to the bags though. There are two pockets. Um, all are lined, all bags are lined with Kona cotton and have my little logo stamp inside. So there's the main pocket and then this front one, which you can put your notions in or your thread. It's really, really lovely. It has like a little heel, heel, <laughs> but talking about my afterthought heel, a little uh, handle. And then this beautiful fabric is called Pastel Pumpkin Patch. That's the name of the fabric design. Oh my goodness. I just, I love this different color scheme for Halloween. I just, I love doing pastel for this time of year. I did a similar, well, not a similar, but I did a pastel themed um, option for Halloween fabric last year as well. And I just absolutely, I've always fallen in love with all the fabrics I choose, but I fell in love with this because of the pure joy that comes out of this fabric. All of the different jack-o'-lanterns, there's like a little vampire one and a ghost and a skull. And it's just cozy as well. It's It's got like, this is just very, very cozy themed. And then as you could tell by my nails, which are on their last legs after a week, they lasted a good long time. I am in love with this blue color. I paired it with this, I found a perfectly paired blue color that's called Midnight, which is perfect for Halloween, All Hallows Eve. I am. So this fabric will be in all the different bag types that I show here today, but this is the first one. The next one is a drawstring bag, which I just went ahead and did in the same fabric. And, oh, love it. All of the uh, details about the dimensions and everything can be found on stitchingthehighnotes.com. So drawstring bags fit a shawl size project, of course, sock. Uh, the beginnings of a sweater project. It's nice and roomy. Um, it's got a twirl drawstring. Um, it also, all of the bags are um, interfaced with quilt batting. So nice, kind of adds it to be sturdy so it can stand up, but it's also can be put into your bag very easily as well. And then we've got little notions bags. And you guys, this fabric is so amazing. Talk about Huga and Autumn. It's got some, just the vibes right now with the end of September going into October is what I was really searching for. Um, it's got the little apples and pumpkin pie. It's got a book that says how to catch a falling leaf. So just always keeping the books because I am a bookworm. It's got home, you know, because we're just all wanting to be cozy in our little homes with the chimney. Um, and so the Notions bags um, fit perfectly uh, for 
like a floss card if you have it for your embroidery floss, your little scissors can fit in there and you don't have to use it for crafting stuff. A lot of people put their face masks in here and put them in their purse so they don't get too dirty. So it's really wonderful. And in this fabric, this is called, um, let me look up the name of what the fabric is called, hold on. Autumn Cottage Days, I mean, perfection. So to get a full view of it, here it is in the maker's briefcase, which is the fourth of five bag types that I carry. This is for your larger uh, cross stitch or embroidery projects. It fits in 11 by 11 Q-snap. I'll correct myself down here. Um, and oh, oh my goodness. I have it paired. I have all of this um, all of the back types uh, paired with a chocolate is what it's called linen. This is Essex linen. It's a linen cotton blend. Um, and the maker's briefcases are uh, lined as well with the cone of cotton and they have a little pocket inside with two uh, sides to the pocket where you can put your scissors on one side if you have a scissor fob um, you can hook it onto the d-ring or you can hook your um, ring of embroidery floss and put the floss in the pocket so it doesn't like swim in the bottom of your bag um, but yeah, I love this one. A lot of people put their uh, quilting projects in here as well. So and it's of course got a little handle at the top too. And then last but not least is I love all of these. But right now this one has my heart today. Tomorrow it might be another. <laughs> oh, can you even? So this is a sweater bag and it is being shown in the Wee Wooly Sheep, things I should have prepared for before chatting with you all. Wee Wooly Sheep and Erin Sweaters. I freaked out when I saw this fabric on Spoonflower. I love it so much and Thank you to the designers for allowing me to use this fabric. I had actually reached out to this designer and she was like, oh my gosh, yes, you can use everything because she has so many other designs that I want to use for bags in the future. This, I think, might be uh, one that I'm going to try to have in the shop as much as often because it's year round. <laughs> but I thought it was perfect to introduce for sweater weather because we're entering sweater weather season. I mean, it's sheep wearing like knitted cabled Aaron sweaters. It's um, I just, I can't. So, <laughs> so I'm nerding out on my own bags, y'all. But I, uh, so sweater bags are for sweater projects, obviously, but they are very, very large and they can fit also your scrappy blanket projects. I use mine a lot of times to put some of my smaller projects in them when I go up to visit family. And so it kind of serves as like a all-in-one project bag for project bags as well. Um, it's got a box bottom. Dimensions again are over on stitchingthehighnotes.com. And I've paired it with kind of my go-to colorway, which is uh, a black, a classic black uh, linen, so cotton linen blend. And it's got a little handle. And the zippers, all the zippered bags uh, have uh, tabs as well. I'm gonna hide my face so you can see that. Last but not least, there are some cute new stitch markers that are coming to the shop that are autumn and Halloween themed, as well as one that I keep forgetting to put into the shop. So I'll just quickly show you these. I've got a cute little jack-o'-lantern that'll be in the shop. All of the stitch markers uh, have lobster claws. Let me show you there. These little lobster claws and a coordinating color. For Halloween also, I've got these really fun uh, vampire mouth ones <laughs> uh, with little fangs and teeth. I paired it with like a silver and it also kind of reminds me of Rocky Horror Picture Show, which I back in my youth uh, used to do around this time of year as well, which is always fun. 
Uh, and then the one that I keep forgetting to put in the shop, uh, but they're kind of year round, is a little watering can uh, for anybody who's a plant mama. And then I've got an apple, which I don't know if I've had in the shop before, but I've been like super into apples as of late. I have some apple related recipes that I want to make here in the coming weeks. So this little cute one. And then last is, and there's a bunch of other ones still in the shop as well. Uh, I've got these cute little acorns that are gonna come to the shop as well. So that is what will be in the shop on Friday, October 1st at 10 a.m. Pacific uh, over on stitchingthehighnotes.com. And what else? So I mentioned like I wanna make some new recipes. Um, I made some new recipes earlier this week uh, to kind of usher in fall. I made a pumpkin uh, chili from Paleo Running Mama that I'll put the link down below. And I swapped out the meat with a new vegan uh, beef substitute that I just recently discovered that I really love. It's not always easy for me to find um, vegan meat substitutes that are allergy friendly for myself because I don't do wheat um, and soy and all that stuff, but this is like amazing. They have a beef, quote unquote, and a chorizo, and unfortunately I can't do their uh, chicken, their vegan chicken substitute, uh, cause it has wheat in it, but it looks really good. But they have really great recipes. I didn't even say what it was. It's called Abbott's Butcher. So that recipe, that was my first time just swapping out meat for vegan meat and it worked really, really well. I just kind of had to adjust the timing of the cooking. Um, I made some pumpkin uh, donuts as well. Uh, I think I posted that over on uh, Instagram too. Uh, and those were really good. That was using a mix uh, by one of my favorite brands, Simple Mills. Um, and then I have some apple related recipes that I want to try as well. I love Paleo Running Mama. I love her recipes, especially her baking recipes are really good too. Um, so I have some of those, but I will be sharing some of that each week. Um, just kind of footage from whenever I've made it throughout the week. Um, because I will be capturing that. I will be daily vlogging over on Patreon. I'm going to be doing Vlogtober, which is a little bit nutty. <laughs> We'll see. I've kind of said if I get a little overwhelmed or if there's a lot going on because life ebbs and flows, as we all know, um, that I could just do like a blog post instead. But I'm really excited. I wanted to stretch my daily, daily vlogging muscles again. It's a very different rhythm and kind of way of uh, filmmaking, which I love is another essentially crafty rabbit hole that I go down is filmmaking. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited. That'll be starting October 1st over there. Uh, as like a thank you to all my Patreon peeps who help keep uh, this weekly podcast going and keep it ad free. I've mentioned before I don't do, I, I've chosen not to do ads on here because I find it kind of disruptive and I don't really take sponsorships um, as a result of that too. So it's just a sit down chat between us. So I could yammer on for days and I'm going to stop here because <laughs> I'm hungry. It is, I think six o'clock now. It's almost six o'clock, 6 p.m. So I'm ready for some dinner to kind of chill out for the night as I edit this so I can share it with you all tomorrow um, and probably knit a little bit more on my sock cuff as well. We'll see how far I can get tomorrow. Um, but yeah, definitely let me know how your makes are going down below. I would always love hearing about it each week. Um, let us know what you're planning to make for the pumpkin mal um, and tag a tag your preparations over on Instagram as well. So hope you are well. Uh, I hope your makes are going well and I will see you all next week. Bye. Oh wait, no, I won't see you. <laughs> Plot twist. <laughs> I don't know if I will see you next week. It's up in the air because my sweet nephew's birthday is next weekend. So I will be going up to be with family, but might, I might try to sit down a little bit earlier and uh, make sure I can catch you up on what's going on beforehand. So stay tuned. It's in flux. But I hope you have a good week and I'll see you all again very soon. 